Good day to you. We begin our midday broadcast. And today, uh, the Lord's voice would like to speak over all the waves. And he was sleeping uh, on, on that boat crossing the Sea of Galilee, going towards Gadara country. He, of course, knew Gadara country would have a lot of enemy action. Uh, it was known as the red light district of Palestine. And he would encounter this Gadarene demoniac who was possessed of a legion of demons. But he knew what he will do. But he was taking a rest and he was sleeping on the uh, boat. And uh, the storm arose. And actually the uh, Sea of Galilee is surrounded by so many mountains. And storms get very violent in the Sea of Galilee. And... Uh, Peter, of course, thought he's quite equal to the task of handling the boat, but then water began to come in and they shouted and said, Lord Jesus, uh, Rabbi, Rabbi, they did not know him as Lord at that time, Rabbi, Rabbi, don't you take a uh, note, teacher, teacher, don't you take uh, care that we are going to sink. So in times of adversity, God's people can think like that, but the Lord arises immediately and speaks over the storm and says, storm, be still. And the storm was still. And the disciples went saying, from, uh, from fear of the waves, uh, they might have gone into fear of who he was. But they still did not know who he was. And another, I think Matthew says, they fell down and worshipped at that time. Uh, but today, our, my concentration on the words, uh, the Lord's uh, direction was, speak over the waves, speak over the flood. God is king of the flood. So what is the flood that comes from Psalm 29? Often the book of Revelation uh, talks of, or even Psalm speak of uh, human agitation, man's power. When man feels powerful, it's called the flood. And Revelation 13 has this beginning that, uh, that, that the beast, the dragon was scouring the shoreline of nations. He's looking to see whom he can recruit. That's what he's, uh, in any nation, that's what he's about, the dragon, the old dragon. He wants to raise a beast, a political beast, and a religious beast. That's Revelation 13. So we are wise about his deeds, but we are not shaken. We are not going to get shaken because we know who is the king of the flood. Lord God Almighty is the king of the flood. Who is the king of the nations? Lord Jesus Christ is the king of the nations. So anytime we feel uh, threatened, intimidated, overwhelmed by the power of man, where do we go? We go to the presence of the Lord, to be overwhelmed by the presence of the Lord, overwhelmed by the king of the flood. Anytime nations, nations are raging, rumble, protest, rebel, we say you are the king of the flood. Uh, so Psalm 29, what are we asked to do? Ascribe to the Lord, O sons of the mighty. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. So we speak to the sons of the mighty, the people who feel corporate powerful, who feel science powerful, who feel politics powerful, who feel economics powerful, you know, puny man. He chooses things to feel powerful with. Some people feel entertainment is powerful. Then the media people feel they are powerful. So many fake kings doing power. So we are speaking, ascribe to the Lord, O sons of the mighty. We are telling the sons of the mighty, those who are taking a power like that in their mouth, in their television programs, or in seats of governance, corporate, wherever, economics, wherever. When they are seats of science, when, when those sons of the mighty begin to, you remember, scowl in sarcasm and howl, and growl and roar, we, what do we do? We take the voice of the Lord from the scripture, Psalm 29. We take the voice of the Lord and we say, we ascribe glory and strength to the Lord. And we tell them, look, 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 you agree, your greatness, your sense of power will be short-lived, you know. So we want to ascribe strength to the Lord. We don't go down with them. We are not impressed by them. We don't run with the hare and hunt with the hound. Some people feel like that for a little while. They feel powerful with political people. But we continually hold authority with our God. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. That's what we do. 
and worship the Lord in holy array. So whenever uh, the mountains begin to rumble, the hill of Zion, the small hillock of Zion, where the King Almighty rules, says, Oh, oh you are raging and rumbling, oh, oh, mountains, and we go to God. And we have a river that gladdens the city of God, isn't it? When oceans row, we turn to the river that's quietly flowing, gladdening, empowering, strengthening the city of God, which is we are. So that is from Psalm 46 allegory, this power struggle, you know, that goes on. Uh, when the oceans row and the mountains of men and women, of course, throw power, the city of God goes quiet. But it's a strong city. There are two cities at war here, Isaiah 26, the strong city of God's people and the lofty, high-minded city of those who rage against God. Don't miss the two. There are two cities. But God's city will win the day when we hold on to and we wait for the dawn. So Psalm 29 says, the voice of the, we, we hear the voice of the Lord ruling over the waves, ruling over the nature ruling over all ecological cycles that he has created and installed for man's own good, though man thinks science is everything and man thinks because he discovers God's laws in science, that's what science is about, man thinks he is king, but we know God is king. The voice of the Lord makes the deer to carve and it goes on like that, verse 9, and in his temple everyone says glory. So after a long list of how the Lord's voice is anyway operating, even in Lebanon at this time, so what do God's people do? They latch on to God's voice. What are you saying? You know what he's saying? Isaiah 57, 15, what he always said. I look, uh, he who is high and lofty, that's him. Uh, uh, whose name is holy and dwells in eternity, Isaiah 57, 15, let's get that dimension, lives in eternity, whose name is holy, he also lives with the one, he also lives with the heart, those who have a contrite and humble heart to revive and strengthen their heart, Isaiah 57, 15, God has two addresses, the high and lofty place and the heart of the humble penitent looking to him for strength. So all of uh, Psalm 29 is about the voice of the Lord is upon the waters, God of glory thunders. Lord is over many waters. The voices of people who are raging with that matter and this matter. But God is on the throne. He will not forget his own. We know the whole chorus. But we want to take our voice and give our voice the voice of the Lord. Align our voice with the voice of the Lord. We don't trust in horses and chariots. We trust in the Lord God, in the name of the Lord God Almighty. We are not moved. We are not swayed. Yes, the Lord sat as king at the flood, 10, uh, 29, 10. So how, how do nations uh, turn around at, at, the, at, at its worst time? We recognize the Lord can sit as king on the flood as well as on his holy throne. God is no stranger to floods, rebellion, protest, human anger. He can sit on it. May the church also learn to sit at the right hand of the Father, seated with Christ in heavenly places. And may the church also sit with Lord God Almighty. You understand? Let the church learn to sit on the flood, not shakily, fearfully, Terrified? No, with the confidence that our God reigns. Our God reigns. Yes, let the earth rejoice. Our God reigns. Lord said as king at the flood, Psalm 29, 10. Yes, the Lord sits as king forever. Yes, then we move on to Psalm 30. I will extol the Lord. And then the psalmist cries for help. Then what happens is he was moved by his own strength. Uh, so, and then he sees the anger of the Lord, his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may last for the night when there's trouble and looks as when man is raging, it's a troublous time. Weeping may last for a night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. So we are assured that the Lord's morning is coming. What do you say? Lord's morning is coming. Yes. Uh, so, uh, we will not get carried away with our own prosperity as Psalm 30 verse 6 says, Your favor, verse 7 says, Your favor you have made my mountain to stand strong. 
Don't hide your face, please. I call and the Lord, I made supplication. Yes. Yes, hear, O oh Lord, and be gracious to me. O oh Lord, be my helper. That's all. And he will turn my mourning into dancing. He will lose my cloth and gird me with gladness. Yes. This is what the Lord has. Maybe, maybe we need to get on with, uh, get on to uh, uh, Isaiah 26 and have a little look at it a little, Isaiah 26. Uh, let me get this uh, phone into order and we'll go to Isaiah 26, yes. We will go to Isaiah 26 and do this. Uh, thank you, Lord, for today's thought that you will rule with your people. You are never at a loss about your people and their destiny and what you want to do for your people. You are never at a loss. So let me get to Isaiah 26 and give you the comparison this morning. You know, we are after elections. And we are still trusting the Lord to uh, give counsel to our president, ours is executive presidency, uh, that the president will surround himself with wise counselors, able men. Uh, we have always issued a blessing for him during this midday broadcast. Yes, we, uh, we, we wise the Lord's intention for our executive presidency. We pray and prophesy all of good that God has for Sri Lanka. That's how we look at it. We are doing prayer governance with Sri Lanka and the destiny of a nation is in the mouth of the church. That's it. Destiny of a nation is in the mouth of God's people. Take care of what you do with your mouth. So I said 26, you see, uh, this is how it is. We have a strong city. He sets some walls and ramparts of security. That is God. We have a strong city. That's God's city. And when God's city has God's river flowing through and God's people occupying their places of influence and prosperity and when God's people occupy what God has given them to occupy, the nation is blessed. That's how it is. And just today we were reading Esther that night Ahasuerus could not sleep because Esther and Mordecai were agreeing in prayer and all the Jews were agreeing in prayer because Haman has set a scaffolding to hang Mordecai and Haman has uh, got a decree from the king to annihilate Jews. It was the last night. But on that night, God comes through. He can't sleep and he finds uh, in Esther chapter 7 that um, uh, Mordecai has done great good and he tells Haman, what must I do? He couldn't sleep, he read his own historic records and when King can't sleep, everybody is up with him. And then he asks Haman, what, what do I do to the man whom I should honor? And in one night, of course with three days of fasting and prayer, as the Mordecai, the whole community of the Jews, uh, God-fearing people, the fasting and prayer. And the king is awakened and he can't sleep in the night and he hears the dream of God, voice of God and pop pops his own historic records saying Mordecai saved his life. And he tells Haman, put Mordecai on the royal robe, the royal robes, and put him on the royal horse, and go saying, "Thee, the man whom God wants to favor." In one night, the destiny of God's people changed. For such a time, Mordecai, you are occupying your seat. So don't let your hands hang down. Don't let your knees go wobbly, and don't let your mind agree with the rage and rumpus people make. You agree with the voice of the Lord. So Isaiah 26, we have a strong city. He sets up walls and ramparts for security. That's you, God's people. In your nation, you are God's city to do all the good you can. And if you want to take the allegory from the 12 gates of Jerusalem, oh, God's city, church, oh, let there be a water gate, let there be a king's gate, let there be a fish gate, let there be a fruit gate, you know. Sheep gate, all those gates, you know, of the city of Jerusalem. You sit right in the midst of your nation and be God's city, yes. Open the gates that the righteous nation may enter. So you are already prophesying righteous nation. You're not talking ill of your nation, are you? If you are talking ill of your nation, which nation would you like to go to? Have you got any COVID-free nation? So please, Christian, stick with your nation, okay? Uh, if possible, I will do a uh, study how what, I have already done it in the English language, what weakens nations. You must go through that study. I'm Dr. Lars Mendes. I do this midday broadcast daily. And my, uh, our contact number, please write it down, plus 94, 77, 49, 59, 
214214. Uh, please send in a WhatsApp for a spiritual clip or for a COVID science clip or for science and reason clip or for a digital science clip. So the last science and reason clip I did was what weakens nations. Please get it. It's important to understand. So open the gates that the righteous nation may enter. That's, that's in your mouth. How do you talk about your nation? Uh, no, no, you, are you going to say, no, no, our nation is bigger. This is your sight in God. This is your insight in God. Uh, to call, calling the nation to come in, come in. The one that remains faithful. We are praying that our nation goes righteous and our nation be faithful. Of course in our nation, Sri Lanka, and in your nation, Germany, Australia, US, wherever it is you are listening from, in your nation, that is taking up God's position to bless. We, we are the holy nation in the rest of the nation. Yes. We are God's nation, but we are passionate about our nation becoming prosperous, becoming righteous, becoming doing good, that there, there be justice and truth and mercy in our nation. We are very passionate. We are not euphemistic, we are prophetic. That's right. We don't go pessimistic, no way. We keep God's heart in our nation. That's the Christian's duty. The steadfast of mind you will keep in perfect peace because he trusts in you, trust in the Lord forever. He's the everlasting rock. Now there's another city. For he has brought low those who dwell on high, the lofty city. They thought they are it, science and money and power and global brands and all that. That goes low. He lays it to the ground. Yes, he can judge a city. Especially the pride of man in a city, God can. But that is God's curriculum, you understand? We only observe and say, oh, oh, that lofty pride, what happened? We look at it and we grieve. Our curriculum is the riches of his goodness. God's curriculum is the severity of God. So Romans eleven twenty two, by goodness of God, which is our curriculum, what we should be doing to our nation, our neighbors, our workplace, our relatives, our friends, everybody, God's goodness. And then there is the severity of God. Knowing therefore the severity of God, we persuade men to get onto his goodness. Severity is God's business. Got it? Yes. And goodness is, goodness of God is what we have to share in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's, let's keep God thinks God, our things us. Yes. Uh, so this is the this is the comparison between the two cities, the uh, strong city that God is and the lofty city that God will uh, deal with it. God will deal with it. Yes. So what do we do all night? My soul longs for you. Indeed, my spirit within me seeks you diligently. For when the earth experiences your judgments, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. They're God's business, not our business. God's judgments are God's business. What is our business? Truth and mercy. Yes, that's our business, yes. Uh, so the, the, it may look as if we cut up to you. No, 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 your hand is lifted up. That's right. That's our hope for our nation. Yes, Lord, you will establish peace for us since you have also performed for us all our works. It's Isaiah 26, 12. Uh, so this is our cry to the Lord that the Lord will, uh, Lord will deal in the nations. The Lord will come through in our nation. Yes. And we will take the effort that it's called the travail to bring forth a new nation. We will take an effort, yes. And then we will not birth a wind. No, no, no. We will birth righteousness. We will birth the goodness of God in the land of the living. God bless you. God keep you with this hope today.